So guys, did you get the answer right to the question that was posed at the end of part one? Well, let's see, because the answer was quite clearly D, all of the above. And in part two, we're going to illustrate exactly how all of the three things above happened. In a second half of the season for Ferrari that was even more dramatic than the first half. So after the first half of the season and the summer break, Ferrari turned up at Spa, a track where they knew they would be very quick, hoping to finally break their duck and win their first Grand Prix of 2019. And during practice and qualifying, Ferrari clearly had the best car on the grid and in qualifying, locked out the front row. With Charles Leclerc getting another pole position and being on pole by 7 tenths of a second. Surely with that kind of gap back to the rest and to his teammate Sebastian Vettel, Charles Leclerc was going to get Ferrari's first race victory. And at the start of the Grand Prix for Ferrari, it went well as they maintained, very importantly, their 1-2 by the end of the first lap. And during the first stint of the Grand Prix, the Ferrari wasn't exactly quick, but it was much quicker than we were expecting it to be. And they were looking quick enough to possibly win the Grand Prix later on. As at the first round of pit stops for Sebastian Vettel, he pitted very early on compared to teammate Charles Leclerc so he could get ahead of Charles Leclerc to help Ferrari defend Charles Leclerc's lead. Because once Leclerc pitted, then Leclerc came out behind Sebastian Vettel. And then after Leclerc passed Vettel, Sebastian then tried his best to hold up Lewis Hamilton to prevent Hamilton attacking Charles Leclerc for the race win. And Sebastian, I think, did the best he could, but Lewis Hamilton was simply too quick in a Mercedes car that during the race was probably the quicker car. And after this, Sebastian Vettel pitted once again and finished in P4 after doing a good job, I think, for the team. And did well enough for the team for Charles Leclerc to have a good gap back to Lewis Hamilton, so Charles Leclerc could just about hang on. And despite Lewis Hamilton catching Leclerc very quickly at the end of the Grand Prix, Charles Leclerc did just about hang on to win his first Grand Prix in Formula 1 and take Ferrari's first win of 2019. Something that was very, very long overdue. And considering the circumstances of the weekend, Charles Leclerc's performance was truly brilliant. Because of course, after qualifying, Antoine Hubert, his good friend, sadly passed away. So to put in that performance on the Sunday and get the race win again is a truly magnificent drive. And was one of the most emotional moments of 2019. And with a week later it being their home race for Ferrari, the Italian Grand Prix of Monza, surely considering the high speed elements of the circuit and how the Ferrari car normally performs at those type of tracks, surely Ferrari, after getting their first win, were going to get their second straight away. But as usual with Ferrari, it was nowhere near as simple as that. Because firstly in qualifying they did not lock out the front row even though they did get pole position with Charles Leclerc as Mercedes were very quick in P2 and P3. Sebastian Vettel ended up in P4 because simply he missed out on doing a final lap because of the chaos that occurred in qualifying 3. Before we get into the race though I just need to clarify one thing because I've seen plenty of people kind of lying about this. And the thing is, is this whole narrative that Charles Leclerc refused to give Sebastian Vettel a slipstream for qualifying three. Let me please explain what factually happened. So in the first run, Sebastian Vettel did not have a slipstream for his first qualifying and only it turned out to be qualifying lap with Charles Leclerc getting a slipstream from one of the Renault cars. And yes, Charles Leclerc in the second run was supposed to give Vettel a slipstream and he was going to if Vettel did not get blocked on the run to the end of the session. And you cannot blame Charles Leclerc for not giving Vettel a slipstream when it wasn't his fault. Sebastian Vettel missed out on a slipstream and doing a lap not because of Charles Leclerc. It was because of the actions of drivers such as Nico Hülkenberg and Carlos Sainz. And there is absolutely no way you can tell me that Charles Leclerc on purpose did not give Sebastian Vettel a slipstream or didn't try to. Those are the clear facts. Now, if you're still going to continue with this narrative that Leclerc deliberately didn't give Vettel a slipstream in qualifying three, then go ahead. But at least admit that you are forgetting the facts on purpose to continue with this narrative. But into the race we got, and Charles Leclerc at the start of the Grand Prix just about maintained the lead as Sebastian Vettel dropped down to sixth place behind Hulkenberg and Ricardo. 
who are having a great weekend for Renault. Soon enough though, by lap 5, Sebastian Vettel got his way past both Renaults and started to catch Valtteri Bottas for P3. But then did what he normally does, and he spun. And then, like an idiot, rejoined the track when there were cars coming past and got a penalty for it. And again, as I've said before when it comes to this incident, even though he might not have been able to see what cars were coming, to be that egotistical to think there weren't cars right behind him on track considering how early on in the Grand Prix it was is still quite poor. And his rejoining of the racetrack cannot be defended whatsoever. And this is absolutely one of the worst cases of driving from Sebastian Vettel. And he'd go on to finish out the points because of a new front wing being put on his car and because of a penalty he was given. Meanwhile, back at the front in the first stint of the Grand Prix, Charles Leclerc was just about hanging on to his lead. And once he pitted for his only pit stop, he was still just about in the lead. But then once Lewis Hamilton pitted, it was really game on. With Hamilton on, the fresher tyres and Lewis was now pushing very hard for the race win. And going up to the second chicane, once Lewis Hamilton got a chance to go for the move, Charles Leclerc very, very aggressively defended his position, forcing Lewis Hamilton off the track. Now, as I said just after the Italian Grand Prix, I still believe Charles Leclerc should have been penalised for this because he crowded another driver off the track. And I think Lewis Hamilton at this point really did deserve a bit more space than he got, but that's the way it was. And during this period as well, Charles Leclerc would jump over the first chicane as he was under a lot of pressure now from Lewis Hamilton, who was still pushing very hard. But then once Lewis Hamilton's tyres started to go away, Valtteri Bottas, who pitted even later than Lewis Hamilton, was starting to catch as well. And then once Hamilton went off the track of the first chicane, Bottas was up to second meaning Leclerc had a new rival for the race win. But because of small mistakes made by Valtteri Bottas right before the end, Charles Leclerc was able to hang on to win the 2019 Italian Grand Prix. In one of the best moments of the 2019 season as a whole, and easily Ferrari's best moment of 2019. And despite me thinking on one occasion Leclerc's defence was a bit too aggressive, his drive at Monza was one of the best of the season that cannot be doubted whatsoever. The hold of Bottas and Hamilton, who were very, very quick in the second half of that Grand Prix, was brilliant. And he showed what he really can be for Ferrari going into 2020. And of course, with the race win for Ferrari, the Tifosi went absolutely mental. As they should, but Ferrari, now coming away from Spa and Monza, knew that winning races for the rest of 2019 was going to be pretty hard. Because Spa and Monza are the two biggest power tracks in Formula 1, and going to Singapore, nobody really thought Ferrari were going to be competitive. But then brought a game-changing update to the Singapore Grand Prix, a new front wing design and a new rear floor. And that gained them enough lap time to be very competitive in Singapore, and a lot more than we thought they would be. And was competitive enough for Ferrari to get pole position yet again for the third time in a row with Charles Leclerc. Despite Leclerc on his qualifying lap almost losing the car two or three times. In a ragged but superb pole position. As Sebastian Vettel the Singapore specialist was in P3 as he could have done more on his final qualifying run but still did pretty well. But things were looking a lot more up for Ferrari at a track where downforce was really required. And in the race at the start it was still P1 and P3 for Leclerc and Vettel respectively. And then once we got to the first round of pit stops, this is where Ferrari won basically the Singapore Grand Prix. By pitting Sebastian Vettel one lap before Charles Leclerc and then Vettel put in a fantastic outlap. Gaining about four seconds on Charles Leclerc during the outlap and Leclerc then pitted one lap later. And Leclerc came out in second place with Vettel in first place. Of course a net first and second once all the cars ahead had pitted. And with Lewis Hamilton being left out way too long by his team, that basically guaranteed race victory and a 1-2 for Ferrari. Even though Charles Leclerc was not exactly happy with how he had lost the race. But at the end of the day, considering that they weren't really fighting for a championship anymore, that's what Ferrari had to do to get the best possible result. And for the first time in a while, a great strategy by Ferrari, who would have thought that? 
So not only in the first three races after the summer break did they get their first race victory, but also their first 1-2 of 2019. And after qualifying in Russia where Charles Leclerc was easily on pole position and could have been on pole position by even more time, if he didn't have such a scruffy final sector, Ferrari were looking in a dominant position pace-wise. Sebastian Vettel in qualifying in Russia didn't exactly do the best job in P3, but was still looking okay for the start of the Grand Prix. Because we know the slipstreaming down to turn 2 in Russia does allow P3 to be in a good position for the start of the race. And that's exactly what happened as Sebastian Vettel from P3 passed Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc and got into the lead. And in the first 15 laps, because Mercedes were on the harder compound tyres that were simply not working in that Grand Prix, Ferrari completely dominated and ran away with the race in the first 15 to 20 laps. And it was looking like as long as nothing went wrong, Ferrari were going to completely wipe the floor with Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes. This is despite Charles Leclerc getting very angry that Sebastian Vettel was still ahead of him as he thought Vettel should have let him through. Even though Vettel was clearly faster in the first stint of the Grand Prix and didn't have to. Eventually, the first round of pit stops, they would swap that around by putting Charles Leclerc on, of course, the better strategy. But to be honest, they didn't really have to do this because, again, their drivers were not fighting for the Drivers' World Championship, so I don't understand why they would be favouring one driver over another at this point. But by this point of the Grand Prix, where it was still in a net position of 1 2 4 Ferrari, surely nothing could go wrong. But of course, it's Ferrari, it did. As first off, Sebastian Vettel retired with yet another reliability failure in a key part of a weekend. Leading to him screaming about F1 bringing back V12s, even though V12s in Formula 1 were much more unreliable. This caused a virtual safety car, allowing Lewis Hamilton to come into the pits and gain enough time on Charles Leclerc for Lewis Hamilton to come out in the lead of the Grand Prix. Then the safety car came out for George Russell's crash car, and then Bottas was put up to second as Charles Leclerc, for some reason, pitted again. Again, a very weird decision by Anarchy Rueda that essentially gifted Mercedes enough track position for them to go on and win the Grand Prix. And not only that, get a 1-2 finish with Hamilton and Bottas. Why Ferrari pitted Leclerc again, I do not understand because again, track position around that track is very important. And they were giving Leclerc a lot of work to do if he was going to win the race anyway. So the race result from this Grand Prix was third and a DNF. When by lap 20, it was looking like a guaranteed 1-2 finish. If that doesn't sum up Ferrari in 2019, I don't know what does. But Ferrari's pace at this point of the 2019 Formula 1 season was still very strong and going to Suzuka, another high-speed circuit, Ferrari was still looking good. And at the end of the day, the Russian Grand Prix was just one bad race after three race victories. Surely Ferrari would just bounce back. And they did first of all in qualifying on the morning of the Grand Prix by getting a 1-2 of Vettel and Leclerc. And with the speed we saw in a straight line from the Ferrari around Suzuka, surely if they maintain the lead on the first lap, it'd be very hard to beat them in the Grand Prix. And with the front row completely locked out, what could possibly go wrong? It turns out that everything went wrong. As first Sebastian Vettel jumped the start and lost position to Valtteri Bottas for the lead and Charles Leclerc took out Max Verstappen after two corners. Then lost a lot of parts of his front wing and pitted and dropped down to near the back of the field. Meaning Ferrari's chances of race victory were basically over before the race even began. And with their start to the race they provided the best comedic timing in Formula 1 seen since 2002. We're at the 2002 Italian Grand Prix, the BMW-powered Williams cars of Ralf Schumacher and Juan Pablo Montoya were leading one and two going into one corner and then by the next corner they were second and one of their cars had retired. And something like that from 2002 is something that is still on the Ferrari bucket list of disappointments. And ways to bottle a Grand Prix, so don't worry, this will be coming very soon. 
But after the horrible start, Charles Leclerc would come back through the field, but only to finish in P6, as simply the car was not quick enough and the tyre wear for Ferrari was quite poor. And by certain parts of the Grand Prix, he couldn't even match Carlos Sainz on pace, as Carlos Sainz ended up beating Leclerc in the Grand Prix. And let's also not forget Ferrari showing at the start of the Grand Prix after Charles Leclerc's contact with Max Verstappen a real lack of professionalism in not bringing Charles Leclerc into the pits with his clearly damaged front wing. And they cannot be forgiven for not bringing Charles Leclerc in straight away because clearly that front wing was not fit for purpose. And leaving him out on track was endangering not only the drivers but the fans and the marshals as well. And Ferrari deserved the punishment they got for that. For Sebastian Vettel though, he did probably the best he could again considering how poor the Ferrari car was in terms of race pace. And did just about enough by the end of the Grand Prix to hold off Lewis Hamilton despite Lewis Hamilton being on much fresher tyres for the end of the Grand Prix. But second and sixth from a front row lockout was not the result Ferrari were expecting or even hoping for. And from this point on, their season doesn't really get any better at all. Because in the next race in Mexico, even though they had a very quick car, Max Verstappen did get pole position until his mouth got him in trouble. Meaning that Ferrari would end up locking out the front row for the starting grid of the Mexican Grand Prix. Surely this time, Ferrari would get the race victory. Well, after the start, it was looking pretty likely as they did have a 1-2 in the first 10 to 15 laps. But then, the strategical mistakes of Ferrari came. As first, after Alex Albon pitted for another set of medium compound tyres, Charles Leclerc did exactly the same. When if Ferrari actually concentrated on the tyres Albon went on to, they would have seen that Albon was clearly on a two-stop race. But obviously they weren't concentrating as Leclerc was put on the same tyre. So then after that, it was a race really for the win between Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. And Vettel still was in control even though Lewis Hamilton was looking quick. But once Lewis Hamilton pitted for an undercut on Sebastian Vettel, surely Ferrari would pit a lap later with Vettel to cover that off. No, they didn't. They did not cover it off and they left Vettel out way too long and basically lost the Grand Prix. In a way, only Ferrari know how to. Lewis Hamilton did, in the final laps of the Grand Prix, do well to hold on to his car and manage his tyres, but still, hitting Vettel as late as they did was a crime. All they had to do was cover off Lewis Hamilton and they probably would have won the Grand Prix. But even a task like that is too hard for this incompetent racing team. And it became pretty clear after the Grand Prix that Ferrari had no plan of what they were going to do in the race strategically at all. And that is why they lost the race. And at the race in America a week later, things only got worse. As firstly, Charles Leclerc was put on an old power unit for qualifying the race because his new one blew up in practice three. So he was down on power and severely down on pace for the rest of the weekend as Charles Leclerc only qualified for qualifying for the American Grand Prix in P4. And Sebastian Vettel only qualified second even though he was looking quite good for pole. Just behind the fin of Valtteri Bottas, but maybe on the first lap because of the straight line speed of the Ferrari, Vettel would get Bottas somehow. That would be if his suspension wasn't broke from the first lap, as Sebastian Vettel went from P2 down to P7, losing places to Hamilton, Verstappen, Leclerc, Ricardo, and Norris. And then during the first 10 to 15 laps, eventually his suspension broke and he was out of the Grand Prix. Now this isn't Ferrari's fault, I think this is the track's fault because of how bumpy it is, but again, when we've come to a bumpy track, the Ferrari suspension has not been good enough to handle it. Obviously it didn't break in Melbourne, but it wasn't exactly handling well on the bumps. But I'm sure Charles Leclerc's having a good race for Ferrari that is making up for Vettel's retirement. Well, of course he isn't as he stays and finishes in P4 and ends up being about a second a lap off the pace for the rest of the Grand Prix. As simply the Ferrari car was too poor on its tyres, the Ferrari car of Charles Leclerc was too sewn a straight line because of the old power unit. And Ferrari at the US Grand Prix were running more wing and that's why their straight line speed on both cars was not as high as it normally should be. So all in all, another pathetic weekend for the Scuderia. But the second to last race of 2019, the Brazilian Grand Prix Interlagos, is taking place at a power track. 
And we know what Ferrari like a power track, so maybe they'll replicate the form of Spa and Monza and go on to get their first race win since Singapore. That would be the case if Ferrari actually had a good car aerodynamically for the middle sector. As in the first and third sector, the Ferrari car was looking pretty good, but in the middle sector, the Ferrari was simply way too slow. Which is why Max Verstappen got pole position, with Vettel in P2 and Leclerc P4 taking a 10-place grid penalty for having to put in his new engine. Then at the start of the Brazilian Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton went sailing around the outside of Sebastian Vettel, putting Vettel down into P3, and after that, Vettel was simply too slow to be competing with the likes of Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton for the race win. The Vettel essentially was racing for a podium, and Leclerc was racing to finish in 6th place. As by lap 10, he was in 6th place, and after that was looking comfortable in that position. And until really the first safety car came out for Valtteri Bottas's broken down car, Ferrari were looking in a comfortable position for P3 and P6. But with the safety car coming out, that allowed Charles Leclerc to pit for another set of tyres and to be on fresher tyres compared to teammate Vettel. So now Leclerc could actually race for a podium and go for it. And on the safety car restart, Sebastian Vettel lost the podium to Alex Albin with a great move by Albin around the outside at turn 1 and turn 2. Sebastian would stay close to Albin, but he was not close enough to really get the position back. But Leclerc was close enough to go for a move on Sebastian Vettel, which he did at turn 1. And then Sebastian Vettel came back at him on the second DRS straight. And then the least surprising event occurred between Leclerc and Vettel. As the two on that straight made contact, front right on Leclerc and left rear of Sebastian Vettel and both drivers were knocked out on the spot. Now in my opinion, Sebastian Vettel was mostly at fault for this, but even if you think Leclerc's at fault, one thing we can all agree on is that Ferrari were at fault for this. Because the two drivers should not be racing that hard at that point of the Grand Prix when points are on offer. And Charles Leclerc was faster, he was on faster tyres and was looking faster at that point of the Grand Prix. So to be honest, if there were going to be team orders, surely it should have been for Leclerc to be ahead of Vettel. Because again, Leclerc was looking faster. And Ferrari's aim at that point had to be a podium finish and Leclerc was looking in a better position to get that rather than Vettel. And this is why I said in part one with the whole racing in Hungary for P3 why Ferrari is such a poorly managed racing team. Because this situation could have been managed by Mattia Bonotto a lot better than it was. And because of a lack of clarity and lack of leadership on the pit wall this was inevitable at Ferrari. Especially after the comments of Mattia Bonotto at the start of 2019 saying that Sebastian Vettel would be favoured in tight situations which was clearly going into the season as we saw the wrong directive to take. And of course, with both cars being knocked out of the race, that was their hopes of winning one more race in 2019 basically dead. As at the final race in Abu Dhabi, there was never really going to be a realistic hope of Ferrari winning the Grand Prix. Because in the first two sectors of the track, the Ferrari car was similar to the pace of the Mercedes or Red Bull, but in the final sector, they were losing three quarters of a second per lap. And you may be thinking, why are Ferrari now aerodynamically poor when in Singapore they were so good? Well, it's simply because Mercedes and Red Bull after Singapore brought extra upgrades that negated the upgrade by Ferrari in Singapore. So essentially, Ferrari went back to how they were in Hungary for the final race of the season. Very slow in any part of a track that required good amounts of front-end downforce. Qualifying, though, wasn't without its drama as Sebastian Vettel spun in qualifying one. And Charles Leclerc missed out on his opportunity to do a final run in qualifying 3 because he didn't make the line in time. And would you like to guess guys who was at fault for this? Well it was of course Ferrari who sent Leclerc out way too late to get that final lap done. But starting the race from P3 and P4 maybe Ferrari can go out in the final race of the season in a way that's not too bad considering the pace. Their final race day though in Abu Dhabi didn't exactly start off well as Charles Leclerc was already under investigation for a fuel irregularity. Even at a Grand Prix meeting where Ferrari were not expected to do that much, they cannot go a weekend without drama, can they? A nice, quiet, clean, calm weekend is clearly impossible for this team. But anyway, into the race, Charles Leclerc got up to second place at the start of the Grand Prix on the first main straight. 
And then Sebastian Vettel went for third place, but Max Verstappen just about hung on. And it was looking all right for Ferrari in P2 and P4 during the first 10 to 15 laps. But then around lap 13, both drivers came into the pits for a double stack pit stop. And again, this pit stop and these two drivers pitting on the same lap just illustrates how poor strategically Ferrari are. Because one, Charles Leclerc should be going a lot longer on his tyres because he starts on harder tyres compared to Sebastian Vettel. And you should never have a double stack pit stop really ever. Unless of an emergency situation where there's a safety car and you need to get your cars in on fresh tyres. Or on two intermediate tyres if it starts raining on dry tyres if it starts to dry up. But hey, maybe they're trying to reenact the great double stack pit stop of Mercedes in Shanghai. Where Mercedes provided two brilliant pit stops in a row. Well let's see what Ferrari did. Well the first one's gone alright. And the second one is a complete horror show. That ends up costing Sebastian Vettel enough time to not be anywhere near a podium finish by the end of the Grand Prix. And Sebastian Vettel would end up finishing in P5 again despite being held up for so long behind midfield cars. Charles Leclerc though, because he was pitted so early and Max Verstappen pitted a lot later, was then overtook by Max Verstappen. Because one, again, Ferrari pit him way too early in the Grand Prix despite him being on the harder compound tyre compared to Sebastian Vettel. And Charles Leclerc, again, similar to Austria, did not put up a good enough defence against Max Verstappen, giving Max enough space on the inside to make the move work. And again, this is a big lesson to Charles Leclerc when racing drivers like Max Verstappen or Lewis Hamilton. If you give them enough working space to make an overtake work, 9 times out of 10, they will make it work. And that is definitely one thing he has to make sure he cuts out in 2020 if he is going to compete for the Drivers World Championship. Because if he continues to do this, then Max and Lewis will know where his weak spot is and they'll know exactly when to punish him. And after this, Charles Leclerc pitted yet again for a set of soft compound tyres and finished in third place. And he was third and fifth for Ferrari in the final Grand Prix of 2019. And let's now quickly, before we get into the end of this video, talk about the whole Charles Leclerc fuel irregularity thing that happened in Abu Dhabi. So when it comes to the cars and the fuel measurements, basically you have to declare the amount of fuel you're going to use in the Grand Prix to the FIA before the race, of course. And then when they measure your fuel load, it must be basically the same. But Charles Leclerc's fuel load was nearly five kilograms heavier than the one Ferrari declared to the FIA. Which is why there was an investigation and we all thought that surely Charles Leclerc was going to be penalised. But instead Ferrari only got a €50,000 fine. Someone tell me again what FIA stands for. As they capped off their awful season when it comes to decision making with a very, very weak punishment. Here are now the key stats for the team, the two drivers and how the team did and the drivers did in the championships. The first off for driver Charles Leclerc, he had a good season in my opinion considering it's his first year at Ferrari. Because he has 7 pole positions, 2 race victories and beat Sebastian Vettel to P4 in the Drivers World Championship. Sebastian Vettel though continues to go downhill as he only had 2 pole positions in 2019, 1 race victory in Singapore and was beat by Charles Leclerc in the Drivers Championship as Vettel finished in P5. And for Ferrari, it was clearly an underwhelming season given their expectations going into 2019. But still, they had 9 pole positions, 3 race victories and finished in 2nd place in the Constructors' Championship. But with 9 poles and only 3 race victories, it does really show you how poor Ferrari's conversion rate is. And how many points they've lost on race day from great positions. But now we have reviewed all 21 races of 2019, let's now get into the 4 key members of the team that have caused this. We'll start off with team principal Matai Bonotto who has to take a lot of blame for 2019. I know it's his first season as team boss but still a lot of the decisions he made were quite poor. For example when he was still technical director at the end of 2019 he was absolutely responsible for the design concept of the 2019 Ferrari that resulted in Ferrari being poor. 
especially at tracks where it required good amounts of downforce. And even at the end of the season, he finally admitted that Ferrari lost the World Championship when they designed their car. Nice to see that he's not in denial anymore, hopefully. Also, keeping people in the team who are clearly not fit for purpose is another poor decision by Bonotto. One person who he's kept around still comes to mind who we will get onto soon enough. But at the end of the day, if you're a team boss, you've got to make the right decisions and forget about emotions. If there are people in your team that are clearly not good enough, you must get rid of them if you're going to improve. It's not a complicated system. Also, his management of the two drivers, in my opinion, has been poor. Again, going back to the quote of Sebastian Vettel being favoured in certain situations. From the moment he said this, I knew it would be a poor decision. Because Charles Leclerc did not come to Ferrari to be a number two driver. If they wanted a number two driver, then they may as well have kept Kimi Raikkonen. And saying this, knowing Charles Leclerc was now part of the team, was very stupid. But altogether, Mattia Bonotto as a team boss, I don't think in the end will turn out to be good enough. I am willing to give Bonotto another season because I think in the second season, we could see improvement. But after what I've seen this season, I don't quite like what I see. What I see is a team boss who is mentally not strong enough for this job. And I don't think Bonotto can quite cope with the pressure of being the team boss for the Ferrari Formula 1 team. And he definitely does not have a strong enough personality like previous team bosses in Ferrari F1 history to be a success. And I have seen no evidence whatsoever to suggest that he's better than Maurizio Ripa Bene as team principal. Again, I'm willing to give Bonotto another year, but if he doesn't get it right next year and has another poor season from his perspective, he has to go. Next is the Ferrari strategist Anaki Rueda, someone who you guys know I like very much. But in all seriousness, Anaki is very poor when it comes to strategy. He is so poor at what he does that I actually think I and many of you guys watching right now could do better in his role. Now I'm not going to get into right now all of the mistakes because there has been plenty and it would be me just repeating myself. But let me just put it this way, Inaki Rueda is incompetent at his job. And someone who is incompetent at what they do is never really going to improve. And they'll just end up being a disease for the team for whatever they want to actually achieve. And as long as Ferrari keep Inaki Rueda at their team, Ferrari will never win a world championship. And I think I can probably say the same for Matai Bonotto as team boss as well. But definitely with Anaki Rueda, Ferrari are never, ever going to win a world championship. And then we come to the two drivers, Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel. Firstly for Charles Leclerc, it's been definitely a good year. He's been very fast this year, of course, getting the most pole positions out of anyone in 2019. But he does still have much to learn and has been at times this season a bit inconsistent. For example, around the Belgian and Italian and Singapore Grand Prix, he was very quick and quite simply great. But then by the end of the season, if you forget Abu Dhabi, he was not as good as he was. But at the end of the day, he's only 22 years old. I would expect that of a 22-year-old. And as long as Charles Leclerc can continue to improve and learn from his mistakes, I think Leclerc will be, as a driver, fine. The only worry from me for Charles Leclerc is... Can the team give him what he needs to win a world title? I'm not quite sure they can, but we'll see. And for Sebastian Vettel, it's the same old story. Too inconsistent, too many mistakes being made, and he is definitely past his best. And if anyone out of the two drivers is going to be the number two driver or a support driver, then it has to be Sebastian Vettel. Because he's clearly not showing any improvement and he's not going to get any better. And it's not like he didn't have his chances to prove that he could lead the team going forward into 2020 and 2021. During 2019, all he had to do as a four-time world champion and a supposed great of the sport was prove that he was better than Charles Leclerc so he can lead the team forward and he didn't prove that. So again, you can't say that Sebastian hasn't had his chance to prove himself. He has and he hasn't proved himself enough. Yes, he has races where he's good, but has also other races where he's not so good and making key mistakes. 
And it's about time that Sebastian Vettel starts looking for what options are going to come after Ferrari. And it's about time the Ferrari start looking at possible replacements for Sebastian Vettel after his contract is up at the end of 2020. But honestly, forgetting 2017 and 2018 and the problems of those particular seasons, the reason 2019 became a disaster was because they got rid of Maurizio Arriva Bene. Was Maurizio perfect as a team principal? Was he great? No, he probably wasn't. But he was a lot better than Matai Bonotto as team boss and there was not enough evidence to sack Arriva Bene over Bonotto. And unless Bonotto in 2020 proves himself to be a very good team boss, that decision will go down as a poor decision. Because at the end of the day, if you look back at 2018, Arriva Bene was not one of the main causes of why in 2018 Ferrari failed to bring home either the driver's or constructor's title. The main culprits for that were Vettel, Rueda and Bonotto. But instead, they got rid of Arriva Bene because it was very easy to scapegoat Arriva Bene for the failures of 2018 and he was the easiest one to get rid of. In a similar situation to when a football club in soccer for any Americans gets rid of their manager despite the manager not being the problem and it being more so the players or the culture of the club. Arriva Bene was not the problem. And from that moment on, when they got rid of Maurizio, I knew that 2019 was not going to be quite what Ferrari were hoping for. Maybe they'd be quick, but they weren't going to be winning world championships straight away with a young team boss. And whatever you say about Maurizio Riva Bene, you cannot argue that he improved Ferrari so much in his time as team boss. He took Ferrari from being a poor team to a team that was able to win races and then to a team that was able to go for the world championship yes on a couple of occasions they did miss out and made a lot of mistakes but he improved the team going forward if you look at Bonotto in his first season alone as Ferrari team boss he has took that team backwards in basically every area except really for straight line speed and because Ferrari got rid of Maurizio Riva Bene and not the other people that were more so the problem Ferrari are still in kind of a denial phase a denial that certain people such as Vettel or Awada or Bonotto are the problem. And until they actually admit that those certain people in those certain areas are the problem, then Ferrari are not going anywhere. And will continue to bottle it and continue to be a massive disappointment to every single Ferrari fan around the world. And in 2020, I don't really see this changing at all. But the best way to describe Ferrari in 2019 is this. Mission failed. We'll get them next time.